Okay. Good evening and salutations, my Days of Elias fans. Johnny, Chanel, eventually run into Alex. And in some ways, while Abe and Kate are simply talking about how wrong, how sideways their interaction could actually be, how it could all sit there and just blow up, given their history and everything like that, it starts to rear its ugly head. And granted, throughout the episode, it's everything works out. I'll just sit there and say that now. But there was a lot of cause of concern when he first met up. Now, here's the thing about this scene. Snow was really getting grating in this episode. She really was. First, she was just like, you know, what are you doing here? I was like, uh, you don't pay rent here. How are you sitting there saying, what is somebody else doing there? Like, you own shit. Like, you need to calm that down a little bit. And, you know, he's there, you know, he's like, you know, I'm auditioning and stuff like that. She's like, oh, well, you know, what, what did she say? Hold on. Because I wrote this down specifically because she just started to irritate me in this whole scene. I think she said something to the effect, and I'm just kind of paraphrasing. It's like, what makes you think you can be an actor or something like that? And I'm just like, what makes you think you can be an actor? You were in that. Johnny film for like a hot minute and you didn't need, I don't remember her actually getting one speaking part. So I'm just like, what do you mean like, you know, what makes him, or what makes him think he could be an actor when you're practically in the same boat as him? Now, Alex did sit there and say like he apologized like a thousand times and she's all like, oh, I hate your guts and everything like that. And I'm like, really? Because I've seen scenes where both of them interacted, and she never came across as this vitriol, oh, I can't stand you, it's on site every single time. So I'm just like, I don't want to sit there and say she's being petty because, yeah, that's kind of a big deal, but he apologized multiple times, and even he was like, I thought we were cool. But she's talking about, I hate your guts, and was like, okay, well, you know what, boo, if you can't sit there and put your shit aside, you can go. You can go right back to your little goddamn bakery. You had a job before you got here. You can't put your itch aside. You should leave. Um, because he tries to make it seem like, oh, well, he has to go and I get to stay here. Like, oh, don't give me that nepotism bullshit. Like, she just annoyed me for the most part. And eventually Abe does get there and she's all like, oh, well, did you know about this? It was like, blew the doors that way. You can go at any point in time. Like, there was something about that diva bullshit that she was meant there pulling that just did not, it, it just irritated me, to put it my way. Um, but, you know, they, they, they talk him into doing it. And I was about to say a thing called Robert. Um, I was just like, hey, listen, I can, I, can, I can put my ish aside if she can. So you do the scene. And it's a good scene, right? And I know that a lot of people are looking at this whole body and soul thing and be like, oh, it's dumb, it's stupid, or whatever. And I'm not sitting there rah, rah, rah about it, but like the scene with Bonnie, right? The scene with Bonnie, um, that was a great scene. That was, that, I honestly tell you, I think that was probably some of the best, that was probably some of the best acting that that chick has done since I started watching, since she's gotten back. And that's saying something, right? And so they do the scene, and uh, you know, apparently they've been working on it a while, so they, they both kill the scene. But it gets to a point where it's like they have to kiss, and Snell's like, do, you know, do we really have to do it? And, you know, Abe and Kay's like, yeah. And even Johnny's like, and he doesn't like it, but he's like, it is part of the job. My whole thing is like, after they kiss, he cuts it real quick. And my whole thing is like, did you really think this through? Did you really think this through? Because you were the one that were gun ho about, 
oh, we gotta, we gotta sit there and get you on camera. We gotta, we gotta do this. We, gotta, you know, what I'm saying like, and then, you know, he made jokes about, oh, I hope the guy's like an Ogmark or whatever. I don't think you really thought this through. I really don't, especially um, given that they they've been together. You didn't think this through. You really didn't. And at that point in time, he should have just pulled the plug. Once he found out that um, he does also sit there and say that, you know, when they were going back and forth before they started filming, he was like, you know what, listen, I can kind of see. I can kind of see this whole, you know, chemistry sparks or whatever. He does know that some of the best actors that have worked with each other, there's been times where they couldn't stand each other. That is actually 100% true. You go to Wikipedia. Um, actors that played like Victor and, and, and Jack. Yeah, allegedly they got into an actual real fist fight. Yeah, so he's, he's dropping some knowledge there. Anyway, they do the scene. They kill it. And afterwards, um, Alex and Chanel are, are both happy and stuff like that. And like, you know, Chanel's like, you know, listen, it's, it's a job. I can sit there and just kind of push my, my ish aside for him. Um, now, Fabi, okay, and that's just me sitting there saying Abby and stuff. She sees fake Abby. Just for anyone that's new. I, I, I really do not want to call her Abby. I really don't. Um, but there's a point where she's not there giving Stefan the, um, the right act a little bit. Specifically about the RA that wound up happening. Okay? Because at first she was like, you know, I can understand why she's upset with you. You know, you did sit there and cheat and stuff. Right? And, you know, he explains his reasons why. And then she's like, well, you know, there's also that time where you are word me, you know, when I was Gabby with a Y. And part of me's like, even though she was like, they giving all that, all that judgment and everything like that, it was like, boo, what you're doing right now, I'm, I'm not, you, you're not really in a position to really sit there and, and, and criticize them that much. You, you really aren't. But even when she was sitting there talking to Chad, you know, her, her story was all over the place. She was like, oh, I woke up. I tried to find what you call it. I tried to find Gabby, whatever. She was going to sit there and have some brunch or whatever. But, you know, she's not in a room. She was like, hey, how about I sit there and take her out to breakfast? Eh, I'm not really that hungry. You just said that you were going to get. OK, you're not making a lot of sense. And it just comes across like she is pushing him away. She's blowing him off at a chance and opportunity to him sit there and spend time. And I think because Chad is just so desperate, so happy to sit there and have his wife back that he's not really looking at some of these signs. You know, he told, he told when Stephanie came, he, when Stephanie came by, he was like, yeah, you know, she, she asked me to move out. And Stephanie was like, I'm sorry, what? Now he said it was for the kids and everything like that. And, you know, explaining and, and she's still trying to get used to everything or whatever, but like those signs are there. And even when he was sitting there talking, he was like, you know, if it wasn't for the DNA test, like there's something that's just off, like her mannerisms, her expressions and stuff. And I guess some of that could be explained by the lack of memory. You know, I don't know if I'll be the same person if I didn't have all the experiences, good or bad, to sit there and got me to this point. But maybe there's a case for where we're being like certain stuff is just kind of there, you know? Certain things, the way you talk could just also be there. Certain mannerism expressions could just be there. Maybe that's just part of your soul. I don't I don't really know, but um Yeah, so again she brings up the whole, you know, Gabby part. And a non consent part. And there was a point where he was like, you know, listen, I, you know, even though that Gabby gave me consent doesn't mean that you gave me consent. But I feel like that could. 
I feel like that could be a conversation where it's like, let's just put it this way. This is something I was thinking about. And the only reason why I keep Snitten bringing this up because they keep bringing this up. But like, let's just sit there and say that she was, you know, Gabby, whatever, right? So, respecting in this alter form Gabby's wishes, right? Gabby doesn't want to, Gabby wants to sit there and go out and do this. Gabby wants to sit there and go out and drink and stuff like that. Gabby wants to sit there and order drinks at the bar and stuff like that. Are we not going to sit there and give Gabby drinks, you know, that's what Gabby wants? You know, are we not respecting that personality and that persona's wishes? Because if that's the same thing, if you're if you're respecting their wishes about what they what they want, what they don't want, then wouldn't that make a case for if they can actually consent or not? I, I just I feel like they're, they they keep pushing this narrative and stuff, and it's like yeah, you know, I didn't know, but you know, I apologize and stuff like that. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think that this whole R word with this particular case is that cut and dry to the point where he's just going to throw in an apology because he's supposed to feel bad. Um, you can feel bad for what this person is feeling. Like, I'm sorry that it, I'm sorry that I did that, but I wouldn't sit there and say that he should sit there and, and take ownership. If her other personality, her alter um, did actually consent to that. Especially if you go back to my original argument. Anyway, she she also apparently gives him a pep talk about, you know, she she didn't leave and maybe maybe you could still have a chance and, you know, giving you a history of, of back and forth and plotting and scheming and breaking up and making up and stuff like that, then maybe you can actually work this out. Now, okay, so this whole Gabby being upset because Stefan cheated, right? I had a conversation with DC and my members on the um, live stream, which you should join. And it's actually great because he, he gave me some good perspective. I initially stand by the whole, you can't forgive that. You cannot forgive that. And I would understand her not forgiving that. Her trying to get revenge, her trying to take him for his money, you know, or his money and everything like that. All this stuff, I'm trying to hurt him back and everything like that. After he did everything he possibly could to get you out of jail. Did, does she not understand that the reason why she's out of jail is because Stefan wanted playing along to keep you safe with Clyde? Does she not understand that he had to blackmail his brother to doing the right thing? Otherwise, she would still be in jail. You know, she would still be in jail if he didn't go the extra mile, the ends of the earth to get her out of jail. So while she's upset and angry about what he did, she's alive and she's still home to be able to do those things. So at the very least, yeah, you don't have to forgive him. But you're taking this to a point where it's like, you're doing too much. Now, I guess my whole... <sighs> I mean, yeah, I do believe in an eye for an eye in a sense of, hey, listen, he cheated. I mean, he cheated, so you should sit there and cheat just to make it even. Now, my reason for that is if I'm going to sit there and forgive somebody, we got to be on the same playing field. But that's, that's that particular case. He did a lot for you to sit there and go out your way to do that. You know, this is where it's like you're taking it too far. And I know people sitting there saying, well, it's because it's his brother. Regardless if that's his brother or not, this is taking it too far for everything he's done for you to get you out of jail. So now she's having regret. She's like, you know, he's just like, all right, so let's, let's go and tell her. Let's go and tell her. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa I, don't, I don't know about that. She's like, he's like, are you getting soft now? I mean, did uh, just Samantha and, and, and Kate and everyone else, you know, wasn't the chick that was going to get back at, at Lonnie by, by you know, blowing up um, Julie's heart? 
it was so what you getting soft now is, is that what you're saying but then he goes from that to actually being nice and understanding and being like you know what let's not get it we don't want to tell him we don't have to you know and he practically is like you know if if i can go back and do it again in a different way i would sit there and do it and swallow my prize so i i get where you're coming from Got a little bit too low too late but he did sit there and try to make an effort to be nice until Stefan came in. And then they uh, wound up saying everything anyway. So, um, yeah. That sucks. <laughs> I mean, now she feels remorseful. I'm like, nah, bro, you, you made that mess. You, you, you want you to sit there and stick, you want to sit there and sit in it for a while. You want to sit in it for a while. That's what you want to do. You want to sit in it for a while. Um,. I'm still going to put this, well, obviously I'm going to put this video out. But I'm going to do the live stream, and uh, I think it's going to be 9 o'clock. It's going to be 9 o'clock. I, I want to sit there and try to start doing four of these live streams. I mean, four of these reviews. Very benevolent. Try like there's something that goes on. Because something I started realizing, you know, the numbers go up and down. And I'm like, if I want my numbers to sit there and get a little bit better, then I need to sit there and do my part and be more consistent. Um, that's just number one. That's number one. I, I'm always going to sit there and do the live streams and stuff like that. But um, I do, in a sense, there's times I like doing videos a little bit better. It works better out for me, and it also works better out for, for y'all because I can sit there and watch maybe a 10 or 16 minute video, watch it, talk about it, and kind of go about your day, as opposed to me sitting there doing a live stream, which is like an hour, two hours, three hours. So it's just also kind of easier on y'all. Um, so yeah. Mostly on days like this, I may have to sit there and push the live back a little bit, at the very least, but um, try to be committed to doing all 40 live streams. I mean, for these videos. Anyway, let me know what you thought in the comment section below. And I'll uh, see you in the next video. And hopefully when I get done with my last video, uh, live stream. Maybe. We'll see. All right.